I'm good. Okay. Uh, Coach, if you could just start with an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Wow, that, that could be a can of worms, um, to be honest with you. Um, I guess just starting at the beginning of the game, just really, um, yeah, disappointed with giving up a blocked uh, punt and not executing that properly right off the bat. You don't like that concept, but to me the most important part of it was just how our players manage that emotion of that, that potentially could creep in. And, um, and they did, they did. They managed it fantastically. They got themselves ready for the next snap. Our offense got the ball, scored, and, and they really stayed on that theme pretty much all day in the sense of their ability to score, whether it was three points or obviously six points. Um, that, and it was really kind of, to me, that, that first play and how we reacted after that was really kind of the story of the game. Is, is whether it was our defense getting a stop or not getting a stop and our offense responding. And it was our ability to be able to just come back and play that next play uh, to a standard that we expected to happen. And, and we really proud of our guys in managing that. And, and that's what it is. It's a quarterfinal game. It's a great football team you're playing in Central Goodness Gracious. Great football and a great tradition as well. And uh, really excited about how our guys managed that. Thank you. Well, no further questions. I guess de defensively, Coach, you guys have had 15 sacks in the last two games, six today. How big was it to kind of get the defensive pressure on a couple of those drives, kind of get the ball back to your offense, kind of get you on that scoring, kind of that scoring run to get you the two score lead early? You know, you know, Daniel, I'm an old D line guy, so I could spend the next 40 minutes talking about that, but I'll, I'll try to put it in, a, you know, my elevator. The key thing, one, you're playing against an amazing quarterback. And you're actually playing against an amazing quarterback that has, to me, in my 30 years of coaching, has the best, his ability to throw impromptu. What I mean impromptu is when you put, force him off his spot. And, you know, you know st studies will tell you, hey, you force a quarterback off his spot, his, his percentage of completion is gonna significantly diminish. With him, I think it actually goes up almost. And, and he's great at throwing in the pocket as well. And um, so that, that was really a big piece for us going in is that it wasn't just being able to throw him off the spot and push him off the spot. We had to sack him. And that's, that's a unique concept, believe it or not, that you, this guy is a guy that you have to sack. Or if you don't, you're on him as he's throwing the ball and, and, and literally making him change his body. And um, that, that was huge going into the game. This is the other concept that really happened. It's the game within the game. When, as a pass rusher, yes, Coach Rindle makes a phone, uh, makes a call, a defensive call. But now, as a defensive lineman, it's you against him, and it's the chess game that happens between an O lineman and D lineman. It's really cool, and that chess game happens it constantly. I'm really excited about how our defensive linemen continued to play that game of chess and recalculate each pass rush opportunity. And that's what really happened in that second half. And that's why you see good pass rushing teams get better in the second half. Because they are. They're they're processing it. And that's you know, and in turn you can say the same thing with the offensive line. Is is if they're a real good offensive line, they're they're gonna win that chess game and get better at that chess game. And our kids did it um, play after play. You talked about just uh, having to bring Hawkins down rather than just moving him around, right? Yeah. I think the very first play from scrimmage that they ran was exactly like that. So was that something that validated something you saw on film? Or were you guys, you know, bringing something different? Was it a realization on the spot or you had already seen it? You know, fortunately, Pat, we played some quarterbacks that were really similar in the sense of how they managed their pocket. And, and, and he had, you know, his ability to, you know, it's third and six. I mean, how many times does this happen in a dang game with him? And, and uh, where it's third and six, oh, everybody's covered, and then he just eats up eight yards real fast. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that was our thing is that we knew that we um, could not let him just do that. Does that make sense, Pat, that, that he, to allow him to go vertical? Uh, the quarterback at River Falls did a very similar, was very similar to that. Um, the quarterback from DePaul was very similar to that actually as well. 
And that's one of the things we study is how, does, how do quarterbacks depart pockets and how do they work their pocket, which then can dictate how we want to pressure them, if that makes sense, whether it's just with our 4D linemen or whether it's adding a blitzer. And we did, we added, we blitz a little bit more than we normally do today. And in, in trying to add another blitzer, with, and to, almost always a linebacker and stuff, because we we wanted we wanted to fill the gap he was exiting out of. Does that make sense? Sure. And yep. and, and in all reality, so I mean, um, yeah, he, he I got some gray hairs this week just thinking about Mr. Hawkins. I tell you that. Did you feel like you were playing against River Falls? You mentioned them earlier. It's a really similar up Yeah, up not even a question. I mean, it is, I, I don't want to say identical, but in the sense of the tempo part of what they do and, and the fast tempo process that they have from play to play, yeah, it was. In, and if you look at our River Falls game, how many points did we give up in the first half? 21. You know what I mean? And, it, and that's one of the things, I, I, you know, if I said this to Coach Rendell, he, he, would, he would, you know, be upset with me, but I, I'm speaking very candidly. When you play that type of offense and with that type of talent, and River Falls was a very talented offense, very senior late. Wow, sounds like I'm talking about Central, isn't it? Because that, that's them. You got a great quarterback, senior late wide receivers, dang good old offensive line. You got to get a feel. It, there's going to be some broken eggs. That's my point. You're going to give up some points defensively. As much as defensive coordinators don't like to give up one point, I knew no, we're, we're going to give up points. We're going to give up points to them early. We gave up 14, which was improvement from our River Falls game. Now, obviously, we had the block punt, so it ended up being 21. But um, but it was very confident in our, with our second half. And that that's a big part of it is our players getting comfortable with what we're calling. Coach Rendell's getting comfortable with what he wants to call. And then it's also just managing that tempo piece of how we get in that, the communication that needs to happen against that type of offense is different. And you, your ability to, you have to keep the game simple. And that's ultimately what it is, is keep the game simple and let your players play. Coach, going back to what you said that was the chess game with the defensive linemen. Yes. Now, is that something that, you know, the coaches have to take them on the sideline? Or you is that something the kids figure out? You teach them. You, you, you actually teach them how to do that in practice. You teach them how to play the chess game in practice. And, and um, you give them the tools to make the decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, and Coach Cortez does that. I mean, he teaches them, hey, if he's doing this to you, then you should be thinking this move the next time. If he's doing that to you, you should be thinking this move. And it's, it's really... It's like playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Think of it that way. That's actually probably the best analogy. Chess is not a good, uh, the best analogy. It's like playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Hey, the last time I worked that spin move on him, you know, do I even work that spin move? Or do I not work that spin move? Do I try to blow the doors off and go in for the layup? I mean, or do I take a jumper? That's what it's like. It's like playing one-on-one -on -one basketball. Um, Coach, Alex Peake's obviously been really good for you, especially the last couple of weeks. Having seen him a heck of a lot more than I have, is this the best he's been? Is he playing at his career peak right now? Peak, yeah. You know, and, the, and I think the thing that Alex is, um, yeah, he, he's obviously had a heck of a career for us, Pat. He has. He's had a fantastic career. I think the thing that is really, he's taken to another level, and he took this as a thing after the 2019 season, is I got to be able to run away from people better. I, I got to, uh, you know, He'd have a lot of 25-yard runs, 32-yard runs, and he's like, no, I got to be able to break those big ones. And, and I think that's been the piece that really um, this season, if I'm, maybe I'm talking about the whole season, is he working on his speed and, and, and pushing his speed and, and, and developing it in the last two years since 2019. Um, obviously, we didn't have games last year. I think that's the thing that he's ultimately taking to the next level. I think the other piece that he's actually taking to the other next level is physicality. He's he's gotten bigger. You know what I mean? I, I, you, you think any tailback? They come in as a freshman. They're, they're this 185 pound young guy, and and I, I'm not even sure what Alex weighs now. But his physicality of how he runs and keeps on generating power with his feet is is another piece of his game that has improved. 
um, since his junior year? Um, Coach, you were talking about careers a little bit, and I know this is kind of an off-game question, but uh, Mike Emmendorfer retired a couple a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Pat Cerrone just retired last week. Um, talk about those two men, and where do you think their legacies will be in the conference, and then kind of what's your favorite thing about co coaching against those guys in your coaching well, one, it's just it's fun competing, and, and, and they coach the right way. They teach the right way teach the right things, and, and, and you have two teams that go out and play each other and, and have a philosophically consistent on how we look at playing the game, and, and, and um, they recruit the right way. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just outstanding, high-integrity human beings that are very talented and extremely intelligent. And yeah, I'm going to miss Pat. Or, I mean, Pat. I've been in this league since 1990. I think he came in like 1995 or something. So I mean, I've known Pat forever, and and uh, it seems like forever. And uh, the respect I have for them, and, and it, yeah, it's a loss to the league. But I do know one thing: UW Oshkosh is going to hire a dang good football coach, and, and UW Platteville is going to hire a dang good football coach. And, and uh, um, we're very fortunate to have had them in our league the past 20 plus years. Those two. Coach, can you just talk about the, the so-called trick play that works so perfectly for you, and then just maybe kind of sum up Max's day and maybe a bigger overview of Max? Yeah, you know, it's um, yeah. The you're talking about the kind of reverse with yeah. Wisniewski, and and uh, you know, Wiz did a great job of executing it, and and Max did a great job of peeling out the backside. Um, you know, basically what you're doing is testing a team's soundness. Are, are they going to stay sound on the backside of plays? That's a common thing. We felt like we could possibly take advantage of that, whether it was Wiz. Run, Wiz has the option of being able to throw that ball or run it. Um, Max was wide open, and uh, Wiz put it in a good spot. I, I, I was... Um, I was more worried about Wiz throwing the ball than I was Max catching it. I gotta be honest <laughs> with you. He kind of just floated it out there, which I was way okay with that. But uh, um, no, it, Wiz is an old option quarterback, which that's what concerned me, to be honest with you. But uh, um, no, so they, they did a great job, you know, and it is. It's testing a team's soundness on the backside. And uh, Max. Um, the thing I was really pleased with Max is just he started the game so fast. His efficiency started fast, and, and there's been a few games this year where he's kind of started out a little bit slowish, and, and um, he started out just fast. And, and um, that, that to me, um, his efficiency, I mean, the guy, it's like we're all shocked when he has an incompletion. I mean, it's like, what the heck? Well, there's, what, what's wrong? You know, no, he's, he's a human being. And every once in a while, there is going to be an incompletion. Really pleased with how he's developed as a leader. He keeps it fun. He has a little bit of that basketball player um, having fun thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you think of football players, you have this connotation of these serious as a, you know, serious son of a gun. And, 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 uh, he really keeps it fun out there, and, and, and I think that's part of what uh, allows us to execute in, in all reality, to be honest with you. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's not pretty when he runs the ball, but he, he actually runs the ball very well. And he gets down really fast, which makes me really happy. I told him you got to work on him to kick 45 yard punts instead of 46s. Oh, <laughs> he's actually he's really good at that, and and he's actually very good. That's the first one he's actually put in the end zone this year and stuff. He's, um, I knew it was a little strong from the beginning. He, you could tell it was a little strong, and there was a wind behind it, and uh, but it was close. He's an all-around athlete, and, that, and that's if there's something. That, I mean, that's just his all-around athleticism is really to me amazing. Um, I mean, like right now. If, if, we were going to have a golf outing, I'd be picking him to be my partner. Because, I mean, he's just that type of athlete. Does that make sense? And yeah, that shows in every aspect of how he plays the game. So one more thing is today means that you have another uh, week of preparation and hard work to put in. Yeah, Can one you more talk week. about that a little bit? What's you coming know, up? 
Yeah, and, that, and that's um, one of the phrases we use around here is powered by tradition. And um, there's a lot of things that tie into that. There's a lot of things. Again, I could go on a dissertation, but I won't. But how does that relate to this? The development. The development of our program for our kids to, for our freshmen to now be in their uh, 15th week, because there's a bye week. Does that make sense? So I think I'm doing my math right there. Um, in their 15th week of practice, not even including fall camp. Um, that's huge. Those freshmen are like sophomores now in their development. That's huge. Any week we can get, it helps develop them. And, it, and it's huge because when you think about it, that, that, that's an amazing thing that, that um, you know, our sophomores, think of it this way, here we go, our sophomores that are here, that were here in 2019, they had a 15, 16 week season because we made it to the steady ball. So now, those sophomores are uh, going on their 30th, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. For them, it's been like 30 potential games here almost, or 30 weeks, you see what I'm saying? So I mean, they're almost like juniors compared to most programs in the country. It, it, it's really mind-boggling that those each week adds up in the development of our kids, yes, for the short term of getting ready for next Saturday, but also for the long term development of our program, that you that they get those bonus weeks. You know, you got to go out and burn, you're, you're in each one, and St. John's can say the same thing, and whatever Mary Harden Baylor and Mount Union, and that that's huge benefit in the development of your program um, in all reality. And that's I mean, is that a reason why you think the top four teams in the in the in the in the top 25 are the final four teams left alive again I, I, I think that's a piece that's a very key path does that make sense that, that there is that development and, and every um, you know it, it's it's really truly amazing when you think about it that way if, if you obviously I'm not going to speak about making it to the next game but you can make it to 14 games dang if you did that for four years in a row Think of how many, how much development's happening in those bonus four weeks of each season. You know, that, that, that's huge. Can you talk about Mary Hearn Baylor a little bit? Do the guys have a little bit more juice going into that one? I know in 2019, it seems like you know, it, it, you there's such a long, you know, a lot of times people talk about the, the when it's for the playoffs, a lot of people talk about the tradition of the Mount Union Whitewater um, tradition in playoffs. Really, it might be Mary Hart Baylor as much as anything. We, we always seem to cross paths, and again, great mutual respect from both programs. Both play very physical brand of football, um, put speed on the field. So I mean, it, it'll be a blast. I, other than that, I can't even speak to what they're doing offensively or defensively. We don't look ahead and, and won't. And in fact, even tonight, I'm not even gonna look ahead. Um, and enjoy this victory, and then uh, be here early tomorrow morning. And we'll start that process of getting ready for Mary Hart and Baylor. And uh, you know, Coach Fredlin and his staff again—they they just do such a great job. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Captain. Appreciate yep. it. Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Right. you guys are welcome to stay if you need to. Yeah. Wrap